From Erie Zone Government Access, Channel 9, from the City Hall Council Chambers, it's time once again for the Taxpayers Hotline Show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your host... Hey, it's City Controller. Well, I think we're going to be on the camera shortly. There we go. There City go. Controller Kaz Kwiatkowski, my good friend. I'm John Steiner. I'm with uh, Mecca and the, uh, well, actually the Perry 200's over, so I might have to get a new title or something. Well, you don't get to the end of the year, huh? No, I think last night was the closing ceremonies and the uh, relighting of the Perry Monument last night. Do you happen to go down there by any chance? Have you heard anything about it? Yeah, I've heard a lot about it. Yeah, I guess uh, I didn't get a chance to make it down there myself, but uh, I did, uh, or like I told you before, our family grew up right next to the Russian church on Front Street. So I did, you know, from the top of the hill, I did see the relighting of the monument, and I did see the uh, fantastic, you know, fireworks. It wasn't really a big fireworks display. It was more of a grand finale type of thing. I'm pretty sure Gibson Fireworks, who's a local outfit, mm -hmm. I think they provided it. And uh, I was, you know, very impressed. And speaking of Gibson Fireworks, uh, I guess they put on a show there. Was it Friday or Saturday night for the flagship Niagara people? And, uh, you know, my uncle who lives down in the house down right on the bayfront said that uh, he felt it was probably the best fireworks display he's ever seen down there. And, I mean, we haven't missed an Erie Day's fireworks or We Love Erie, whatever the title is now. Uh, we haven't missed any of those. So for him to say that gives praises to what uh, Gibson did as far as the fireworks displays go recently. And they're a local outfit where I think Zambelli's is by Pittsburgh, aren't they? Yeah, it's, uh, I'm trying to think. I think Zillian, uh, why is Zillian Opal coming? That's there? sticking my head. It, it's a yeah. suburb of Pittsburgh where right. they are. Well, don't get me wrong, they do Where, a good job. Where's this company out of? Yeah. Um, this company is in, from Erie County. I want to say south, like Titusville, or somewhere. Not, I mean, they're not a city company, but they are from Erie County. And uh, I think they're a new company. We used them for the Perry 200, uh, the 4th of July. I didn't even know we had a company like that up here. Yeah, they, uh, they're kind of a newer. They're trying to you know, make a name for themselves. Uh, we used them for the south. Uh, fireworks display on the 4th of July, the night that we did all the four different fireworks. And uh, the people down south uh, were very impressed with the job that Gibson did. Uh, you know, they, and they synced all the music to the fireworks, which made it really special, and uh, they did a really good job. And they're local. You know, it's good to have local I like people. it when they do the 1812, mm -hmm. and they have the church bells and the cannons going up. Mm -hmm. now, that's a sync. I heard, you know, I was, like I said, I was up on the bay front, on the bluff, I guess you could say, and I could hear the, the can, they had cannons going off, and I'm pretty sure that was probably from the Niagara. I didn't get a chance to make it down to the waterfront. I wish I would have. But uh, <clears throat> from what I had heard, they had a really good crowd down there. And uh, it was kind of chilly last night. I got to fire a cannon once on the Niagara. That was an experience. Did you? Yeah. Back in the day or no? <laughs> <laughs> you're not a, you're not cappy old, are you? No. Okay. Okay. We won't go into that. Oh, they, but, <laughs> no, they let us fire it one time. Right. I well, actually I was surprised, John, the number of people. I was downtown Friday, mm -hmm. and there were a lot of people from different areas of the country. Right. I was kind of surprised. There was a whole group of women I met mm -hmm. uh, who had traveled from Michigan. Uh, I thought they said Kalamazoo. Mm -hmm. And... You know, I was, I was just amazed, and then I saw other people uh, strolling the park trying to find places to eat and everything, so. Mm -hmm. Well, they had a... Uh, the tall ships do bring out, because when I was up in, yeah. I missed the tall ships in Duluth by about a couple of weeks or so, mm -hmm. when I was up there, and, uh, you know, All right. it is a draw. Right. I mean, they had a big crowd down there, and uh, I guess they superseded what they had expected and uh, outdrew what they drew in, at the last... Uh, Tall Ships Festival. So, overall, um, I guess it was, I guess it's another successful event. I think uh, the Perry 200 and all the people involved up at the Jefferson Educational Society and all the volunteers throughout Erie County that in the flagship Niagara League and the Erie Playhouse and all the other organizations that pitched in to make these events possible. I think they've done a really great job and provided Erie with a lot of events that are family friendly and that's that was the key when uh, we put this whole thing together was making sure that we had events that the whole family could attend that were affordable if not free uh, which uh, 
just benefited our community as a whole. It's important that we remember our past to know where we are going in the future. Oh, just a reminder, if you have any questions, don't feel, feel free to call in about any of your complaints. The rules as always are any, we will talk about anything as long as we keep it uh, neat and clean. And uh, so we welcome your phone calls. It's listed on the TV there. Feel free to cut in any time you want. They had, uh, they had to look at our faces for two weeks on the replays. So, because we didn't have a show last. How did your Labor Day go? It was, uh, I was out of town. It was interesting. I was in Allentown, actually. Allentown. Yeah, I got to go past the uh, Big Apple, too. We, we did a little side trip. Really? Yeah, that new, that new tower. Oh, yeah. 1,776 feet. Wow. Go ahead, caller. Hey, Kaz. Hey, I want to I wanna talk a second about motorcycles in the city. Yeah, go ahead. You know, they, they keep walking, they put things in a paper about these poor motorcycle people getting killed and that. You know, I've noticed on 38th Street, I live up by Mercy or something in that area, they especially get three or four of them together. They weave in and out of traffic to try to stay together from light to light. They cut in between cars. I seen one on 38th and he stabbed me one day. They, they call it a wheelie. Mm -hmm. He lifted up his front wheel and went about 20 feet. And I was waiting for him to tip over. You know, those machines are big and powerful. And a lot of those people don't realize how much power is in those machines. And they can't handle them on these curves and the places where they pile them up. And, they, and if they go through the city, watch them. They, they cut in front of you. They, they, uh, I don't even see them sometimes coming alongside of me, and especially when there's a group of them. Keep an eye on that. You do, do what, and they cried that the, the car drivers aren't watching out for them. It's pretty tough. You, you know what they you know what they call those people that ride those uh, real nin, you know those real fast bikes that do wheelies down the middle of the street. You know what else they're called? Organ donors, because uh, a lot of them are they're just reckless and you know the, the, when you're at a young age you think you're invincible, and a lot of times maybe it is the driver's fault. Because there are instances where I've seen drivers pull out in front of motorcycles where we, they've had to swerve around, I mean, even, even in cars. But you'd think they would take a little more, uh, be a little more respectful towards the traffic around them, considering all the deaths that we've had in our community lately. Uh, be a little more respectful towards the traffic around them. Are you still there, sir? I think you, you have to turn your TV down a little bit. Yeah, I'm still I'm I'm listening, yeah. Oh, yeah, you, your TV's going to mislead you a little bit. Yeah, because we're on a time delay. Like, I was in church yesterday, Saturday, rather. Saturday night, you could hear them the, uh, going up and down uh, 28th Street, you know. Right. Now, there's a lot of good drivers, I want to say that. Right. You know, and, I, and I've seen a lot of them out there. They, you know, they're very mindful and respectful. But it seems like, like you're right, John, they, there's a certain segment of them Mm -hmm. that uh, I saw one on I-80 coming home. Mm -hmm. I mean, this guy was just weaving through everything. It right. doesn't take much to throw you off, you know. Well, those are the type of people that you don't feel sorry for when they do get hurt or get killed. You know, I think that we're seeing a lot more uh, accidents and deaths because there's just a lot more people riding these days. It's like, it seems like it's a cool thing, like they're the motorcycle clubs and Ever since the show Sons of Anarchy came on the on the air, it seems like everybody want. It's cool to be in a motorcycle club, and it's cool to uh, you know ride around on motorcycles. And I mean, I do see the benefits of it. I mean, it's it does have its pros, but it, when you have so many motorcycles on the road now compared to what you did before, and the ones nowadays, they're so much faster and have so much more agility. And you can't pick up the turn signals sometimes. That's a big problem. Well, and plus you can't see them. I was coming down State Street about a month ago, and there was one right in my blind spot on 18th Street. And he, I almost sw switched lanes. You know, I was doing it, you know, I had my signal and everything. He couldn't see my signal, and I couldn't see him. And I almost switched lanes, but I caught him right out of the corner of my eye. And he's lucky I did, or else he would have been on the pavement. And, you know, that's the bad thing about riding a motorcycle. There's nothing between you and the pavement. So they need to be responsible, and it's you, know, you feel sorry for everybody that gets hurt or gets injured because of vehicles, but they do need to practice safety. Their life depends on it. And I think it's a younger segment that's doing it. It's, you see a lot yeah. of older, you know, older people driving. Right. Well, respectful. I mean, nowadays they have the trikes now. They have the three-wheeled motorcycles. I mean, that will improve the safety. But you got these young kids on these Kawasaki Ninjas and these 
you know, these other motorcycles that just have way too much power. Well, we're, we're going to have to take that guy's complaint and uh, we'll, we'll run it by the new chief. All right. New chief? Yeah. Ooh, what happened there? Uh, please call back. You better let me answer the phones from now on. Yeah, new chief. <laughs> yeah, we're going to bring it up to the new chief, you know. The new chief, that's right. Well, the new right. chief actually rides, so. Does he? But I think he'd, he'd agree that there's a segment out there that, you know, they make it bad for the good. They're drivers. not responsible. The, it's just like anything else. The actions of a few ruin it for the many. And it's sad that uh, a lot of them have to pay with their lives. Go ahead. You want to do it? Go ahead. You're on the air. You have to turn your TV down. Go ahead. You're on the air. Hello? Hello? I guess they, uh, they didn't want to talk. They just wanted to call us. You got note? What do you have over there? You got notes over there? Yeah, I'm just looking at them. There's nothing really important. In there. Nothing important. Yeah, we had a with the holiday and different things going on when they uh, Perry 200. I don't know. Did you see the paper? I was it yesterday? They're talking about creating tax-free, not tax-free zones, but kind of similar. They're call Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Go ahead, caller. Hello. Yes. Yes. Hey, this message is for John. Yes. John, I want to congratulate you and your committee for the centennial of the 200 years. It was beautiful events for everything. Yeah, I appreciate you calling. and th I mean, there's a lot of work. That was over like two years of planning that would involve for, well, actually, I take that back. Make that four years of planning for two years of events. Yeah, everything was perfect. Nice weather, the parade, the show, all the runs and everything. Everything was just a beautiful event. You people deserve a good pat on the back. Well, hey, I appreciate that call. And, you know, it's always good to hear good things from the public. I think that, you know, by the, the attendance numbers that we had at every single one of the Perry 200 events shows that the community uh, supports our history and our heritage and, and is starting to understand. And, it's, you know, we realize that the thing is, is not only do we need, you know, for the older folks, but to get the younger kids so that uh, when none of us are here, for, well, most of us aren't here for the 250th anniversary or the 300th year, they know that they need to carry on a tradition that was set and try to better what we did this, these last two years. Let's really hope so. Yeah, because, I mean, we, one of the things that really isn't publicized a lot was we did have programs throughout all the Erie County schools where we distributed uh, War of 1812 and uh, all the Erie history uh, materials to a lot of the teachers and the uh, different superintendents pass them out to the teachers in order to teach the kids what they need to know and how you know the significance of the War of 1812 and Erie history itself so they can carry the tradition. Right, but I think you guys did a good job. Now, I, now for my complaint. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Hey, Kaz, what happened to the East Side Federation? They it's, were established. Yeah, we we still we still meet. For what? Did uh, they back this bridge? You no, didn't hear one word from them. The East Side Federation went totally political. They back up people running for office. Uh, they don't do it anymore. It's been, there's, in reality, there's only about, uh, I'll be truthful with you, there's maybe 10, 15 members. It's nowhere near what it was. In fact, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the clubs that are Polish aren't even active members of the group anymore. Happened when I was in the Federation. Absolutely, it was a it was a big organization. I held Polish Day. I held the Polonaise Ball. I was the chairman, the decorator. Ran the Queen Contest one year. Well, we still have the Polonaise Ball every year. It's where it's at Falcon. Yes. We used to have it at Rainbow Garden. Yeah, we, we don't. Let me tell you this: when my daughter was Miss Polonaise, uh, she was she made it when they had it at uh, St. Peter's, the uh, school. And then it moved out to the Moose Club, and then it moved to uh, uh, Falcons, basically. Uh, it, they, they, they don't get the attendance that they used to, no matter how hard they try. We don't even get the support of the newspaper, really. Newspaper was a kind of has a hands-off policy on much more than the picture of our queen. They don't do any lead-ups or anything like that. And we've, we've tried our best to do it. Okay. okay. But, I mean... Uh, I think they, they should have spoke out. 
out, even if there's only four or five members there, because they are on the east side. Actually, a couple of members did speak out. No, I didn't hear them. Well, uh, if you want to call me, uh, I'll tell you what, call me off the air at my number. Okay, wait a minute. I'll fill you in a little bit about the group. All right, may I have it? Yes, it's, uh, my number here is 870-1349. Right. Give me, right after the show, give me like 15 minutes. Okay, yeah. And I'll, I'll go through with you. But, yeah, the group itself, they have not been, uh, we barely have enough people just to, uh, to keep our, uh, a little bit of what we do there. We have been active in uh, donating to the Polish radio show, and there's not a lot of money in the treasury anymore either. My goodness. I mean, it's, uh, the group, I joined it many years ago, and it's, uh, it, it was, uh, and number-wise, it's nowhere near what, you know, the golden days were. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, Kaz, but I mean, the demographics yeah. of the Polish neighborhoods... Well, you can't get the kids to join these things anymore. ...are changing. Really. I mean, the, mo the people who grew up in the Polish neighborhoods are no longer living in the city or, you know, involved in... But look at the, look at the Zababa. They had over about 50,000 people there. Right, that's, str that's strictly the church doing that. And, uh, I know it's strictly the... the when the Eastside Federation did, they had it out at Paderewski Park. A long time ago. And I think, you know, the feeling amongst a lot of people then was, uh, why didn't they switch it like to Waldemir? Yeah, where they used to be. Yeah, but the trouble is, like, to pull it off of Waldemir, right now we don't have enough people to, to do that. I belong to a couple other groups that have since run into the same problem with declining membership. Uh, when, when you're at my age and you're one of the younger people, that's a real problem. Yeah, I'm older than you, but I used to be in that federation. I worked my butt off for that place. Yep, yeah, and you know it shows because there's a lot of nice things there that, over the years, you know, we're trying like heck just to be able to last to our 50th year. Wow. And uh, you know, we'll have our. I'll, I'll fill you in on like the. You know, the, we still have the Polonaise Ball, but you know, trying to get people to come to it is, uh, and, and there, there's a hardworking committee at that that does it. Like pulling teeth, huh? Yeah, it's, I mean, you, you can't get the young people really into it. We've tried to encourage it, you know. That's really a shame. But we're not alone. I mean, you take uh, take any of the other ethnic groups that exist around the city, like the the Mazzini, the Wolves Clubs, all of them, they're all up against the same. Look at your ethnic clubs. They're, you know, most of the people that are now in charge of your ethnic clubs aren't even uh, of that ethnic Polish or Italian or German, you know. They all intermarried now too. Yeah, and, but even yeah, even that way though. But you have they they to be able for them to survive, they got to the last thing in their mind now. If you go to a lot of these clubs, is you know you have a lot of good ones that are still in the Polish core, but a lot of them, you know, they've had to uh, you know move on in some ways. Okay, I'll get off. Let somebody else. But but we do get good support from a few of the clubs, but some of them are, are struggling on their own. So yeah, you know, it, it's a tough go. I'll talk to you later. Right. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, you know, you get the, 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 the different festivals like the Zabava and uh, St. Paul's Festival. Mm -hmm. You know, you have your Polish, your Italian, even the German Fest. Uh, you get people that come back to the neighborhoods. Yeah. And, and, and be, they do a lot of work at, you know, Trinity Absolutely. and St. Paul's are. Absolutely. Go ahead. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. A UFO just went by. I have to hold off here a second. A UFO? <laughs> hear it? We thought we heard something. We weren't sure what that was. My wife flying around the, the neighborhood on her broom. <laughs> oh, my God, John. Hey, you know what? The other day I was, in, I was at Starbucks, and everybody was looking up in the sky, all these tourists and everything. Chinese balloon. Well, it looked like, it looked like, like a UFO hovering in the sky. It was a Chinese balloon. Was that what it was? Yeah, they had all orange lights, and it was going south, I think. It was like mylar balloons on there, it looked like. Actually, I think I did see what you guys are talking about. Yeah, I saw that. In fact, uh, I saw the day they re really went over. There were six of them. What, UFOs? Yes. John, what are you... Uh... May 13th, I think it was. <laughs> hey, uh, gentlemen, we're talking about the Eastside Federation. You know when that, the club started going down? When's that? 1954. Why, why do you pick on that year? 54, because that's when Flatley got caught. Dipping with the gambling and oh. his back on everything. Yeah, those clubs at one time, when you go back in the old uh, hierarchy, the, you know, they took care of their members, they had health plans. Well, that was back in, in the uh, 
fifties. Right. And they, they, I remember they had touring baseball teams and bowling teams and That's family pic- the slot machines were yeah. doing good. Absolutely. The, the, the membership was good. Family picnics, the whole deal. Family picnics, Christmas parties, you name it, they had it. But now we got legalized gambling where the state is the one getting all the money. And then when the clubs now have to give a portion of their money now to charity, you know. That's true. It's a whole thing. That's, you know, a lot is to be desired. But you know what? Those clubs are where a lot of people, I mean, I, like I hang out at the Legion Club a little bit, you know, on Sundays and Thursdays once in a while. There are a lot of people playing those, uh, mach- the uh, what do you call it, the ticket jars. Jeans. But you know what? It's good for the club and it's good for now the charities that benefit from it. Well, they always used to buy their licenses. And they all still are. Now I think the state solves them. Yeah, it's... Talking about licensing... Uh-oh. They were Gannon and just broke their, their ground for their athletic center. Yep, that one that, with the dome. Yeah, I understand that they're going to make it available for the public. Is this going to be free or is there going to be a cost involved in that? Wait a minute, they said that? Yeah, it was on the last council meeting. Uh, some tells me, though, it'll be... You know, when I was at Gannon, we were allowed to use the auditorium. Yeah. On Saturday morning from 8 to, like, 8 to 2. True, but they said it was, they were going to make it available for the public. Now, if they're going to make it available for the public and they're going to charge the public for using this... Yeah, then I think it loses tax exemption. It goes to a tax exemption. You hear, hear what they did? Uh, don't, make it ta- don't make it use for the public, but you'll have to pay... Like if they would like, they do their basketball. They have basketball tournaments throughout, and to use their rec center as one of the different venues, you have to pay them. To or use you have it. to buy a membership to their gym. Right. There's always a cat. There's nothing's free. Especially the last thing they want are, are kids or, or people from the Lower West Side or that area or anywhere from the inner city to be using all their facilities. That's not going to happen. So. Hey, John. You know what's funny? I'm listening. A friend of mine went to that uh, coffee shop they used to have down there. Uh, the old antlers? Yeah, the old antlers. Were. Right. And he was a neighbor, a neighbor, one of the neighbors, you know, and he walked in. He's, he told me, but I said, man, it's a Wi-Fi great... wasn't working. Pardon? <laughs> Good, nothing. I just made a comment. Yeah, he said, uh, it was a great place. He said, the coffee's great. He said, you ought to try it, right? So <laughs> I said, you know, I think I will get down there. Three bucks a cup. Well, no, that wasn't the problem. Two days later, he went down again, and the, the manager said... Hey, do you like this place? And you know, they're taking like you know, talking. Yeah, I, I like it. And he goes, uh, he says, uh, he looked at me. He said, "What are you, a professor over Gannon?" And he goes, "No, just a neighbor. I'm gonna tell my friends about this place." He goes, he, he kind of told him like, "Well, we really don't want you in here." <laughs> yeah, it's just like up the street. They want everybody. Yeah, but you know, you know why they do that? Because if you go to that one out there in uh, Peach Street, John, that's owned by Lecom. Yeah. Half the billing pays taxes. And half doesn't. Right. The half that's a student body part where they have a study lounge, that's tax exempt. But the part that vends to the public is taxable. So Gannon didn't want to do that. So then they, they, they kind of like told him not to come down there. But I could still get in there because supposedly with an alumni card, you were part of the family. Oh, you go up to Panera's. If you buy a breakfast, coffee's only a buck. Really? I don't mind paying more for a cup, but... You know, when they, when they close it to the neighbors because, you know. Well, that's a whole disrepresentation of what it's supposed to be. Well, they want to keep it tax exempt instead of, you know. Like we're going to build another hotel and parking ramp down, on the, down by the GAF site. That's going to be interesting considering I think Mr. Scott still has plans to build too. Yes, but this is going to be on the area where they had their parking for the, the convention center. Yeah. And they're going to get. $25 million from the state oh. over a period of five years. Yeah, well, Mr. Scott does it for free. And then I mean, his got, own dime. You got Roger Richards, who's going to uh, write up the bond, getting the money for writing up the bond. And where else can the, the, the hotelers in town have a, 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 a somebody that's in competition with them that's state and bed funded? Well, yeah, that's what Scott was arguing about and all the rest of the hotel guys. And I know the mayor isn't very happy about this project. Well, when Scott builds his hotel, you can bet there won't be any state I mean, money in there, right? Pension center project. Won't be any money in Scott's project, right? No. But the whole thing here, if he's not happy about it, he should talk to Mr. Brennan and tell him. 
He's not happy with this. Who's that, the mayor? Mayor, he's not happy with this at all. He wants taxable property down there. I still say, whatever they do that property is going to be the single most important thing in the Bayfront and our last chance to do it right. Well, let's just put it this way. When I saw the initial plans of what Convention Center Authority wanted and the other groups that were putting together the multi-use plans, I, I could clearly see the, the added benefits from the other plan other than the Convention Center plan. And I sure hope that this hotel isn't part of their initial plan that they wanted to go with because it's not going to bring up enough revenue for the community. So hopefully they're keeping that. But from what it said in the paper, I thought that there was an, there was, it wouldn't interfere with any of the other proposals for the property. Am I right about that, John Dino? But the whole thing here, it will interfere. Well, see, that's, that's not good then. Because then they, we need to maximize the... Entrepreneurs the, won't want to come down there. Right. I mean, let's face it. The buck is tight in your ears. The nonprofits are overwhelming. They all have to be reanalyzed. Re and the whole thing there, it's just, it's just terrible. Well, the, We're going to run out of money. The, the mayor's against it because, understandably so, he's made it a point to say that uh, I don't want to be accused of uh, being rubber stamp for Joe. A, a comment, he is not going to comment on it because he wants taxing bodies in there. Right, as Mayor Veery and as, as a, all of us who are in government, that, you know, our job is to, how do we make your taxes lower, John, where you live? is by expanding the tax base. No, you make my taxes lower by sending a sweeper up and making my wife go out and clean the windows. <laughs> you know what I mean, though, John? If we, we have to grow the economy. I mean, we can't keep taxing people that are here. We have to find... Everybody's leaving. Yeah, we have to find people to come here. And the mayor's right when he said that. And I'm not, like I said, I don't want to be accused of being... I don't, I don't speak for him, but don't he's right that. in this aspect because I've said it all along. We need more... The, the secret, why is Mill Creek doing well in all of them? Because they're growing their, they're growing their tax base. They're not, you know, and we did it at one time. That was years ago when we hit the golden mark of 138,000 people. Now we'll be lucky if we have 110. Right. Well, no, we'll be lucky if we still above 100. 100. Yes, for the next census. But uh, the last council meeting, were you there, Cass? Yes, I was. What is uh, Mr. Shermany doing with an intern? Is she paid? Some of them around here are and some aren't. I'll have to find out for you. Mel Witherspoon's granddaughter, not that I have anything against it. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'll have to check into that. Some are unpaid. We have some un un unpaid positions. I understand the mayor has an intern working for him. We do during the year. We, we do hire kids. Name the one that took over for Laura Schaff? Uh, Bill Beck? No, that, she's not an intern. Well, she might as well be. I don't see her in any functions. Well, she's on all the council meetings, and she... Well, but she should be out in the community. She, she is, uh, but I, I will tell you that uh, I was embarrassed. She was at one event that the mayor couldn't make, and the people had completely ignored her. Well, they didn't they think she's just a young kid the way she's dressing out there. She should dress representing the city of Erie and put a pin on her, on her uh, blouse or whatever, like they, Joyce they, always did. Yeah, but they knew she was coming. That's what I was kind of embarrassed. Oh, Joyce had Erie all the time in her sequence. But you know one other thing about Joyce I want to say real quick? What's that? She was on the Niagara with Perry. <laughs> she was what? She was on the, Ni the Brig Niagara with Perry. Well, John and I came across some little-known secrets of Erie City history. <laughs> Do you know if the wind had shifted, Perry wouldn't have won that battle? Absolutely. Perry went from goat to hero. Well, he's the only one to give a bow shot down there. He he's, would have got clobbered if he, the wind hadn't shifted. He's lucky he didn't get court-martialed. <laughs> That's true. Hey, seriously, though, we found out some. John and I, we did some research. <laughs> I'm listening. There were two councilmen, one of them still around, that voted against the rezoning of the, of the Perry shipyard. <laughs> yeah. Who do you think that was? The one councilman that voted against it? Well, there's two of them, but only one's here today with us. No. <laughs> You're close with the last letter, though. Oh, yeah? Former councilman. Yeah, well, but uh, he's got a new catalog, so we can't hey, make comments. If, if, I, if I say Cappy, he'll get mad at me, but I joke with him about that all the time. Mr. Waddles, I call him. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> Have a great day. I'll talk to you later. It's almost time to go out and beat them drums. Hey, but John, seriously, Joe Beck does get around. Oh, you know. Well, she should be seen more. She she's out there. But uh, just like Sarah should be seen more. And Parmenter, the lights are still screwed up. Which ones? All the crossing lights. Oh, John, I, I got it. I'm going to take you out. Seriously, this week we're going out. Okay. My breath last week. Huh? I held my breath last week. I know, <laughs> but you know what, I, John? We, it was a bad week. I had. I held my breath last night too, and didn't do me any good. The Giants fumbled you guys, six times. Well, you, John, yeah. you, you could be. You know, if there was one bright spot this weekend, okay? Yes. Uh, it was the fact that in my conference they're all 0 and 1. That's right, and I think Pittsburgh needs a new quarterback. Well, they're hopping off that bandwagon. They're all Pirate fans now. They need some running back. They need some blocking. They're, they're all Pirate they're... fans now. Can you imagine not having a backup center that could come in and do the job? That's sad. Vince Lombardi is probably turning in his grave. Well, you know what? I blame that on the league today, John. You can't stockpile. The way they got the salary thing now, you can't stockpile linemen. But Vince Lombardi used to tell him where he was going to run the ball. And he did it. He didn't care. He did your job right, you do it right. Yeah, that he had that famous power right with Paul Horning. That's right. Or up the middle with Jimmy Taylor. Yeah, absolutely. Here I come. Stop me. Have a great day. You too. <laughs> you know, if there's one thing I hope comes out of this Perry thing, and I was amazed that uh, all the leading dignitaries were on that boat. Let's hope their commitment is there financially. Well, everybody likes to show up for the photo ops. Yeah, right, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. Where's the funding from the state? People oh, ask right. this, you know. When it comes time to scratch and checks, that's a whole nother story. I mean, this, this ship is an ambassador of the Commonwealth. This ship needs work. Major work. Really? Yeah. The, the inside. Well, they've, I, they've often said that it'll end up like the other one on concrete blocks. The, 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 the inside of the ship, or I forget what it's called, but it needs a lot of work, and it's the expensive work. You mean the cruise quarters? Or the it's the, the, just the frame. Oh, you mean the keel and all that? Yeah, the, I mean, the, uh, the underneath where the, I don't, the mat, or I don't know what, I'm, I mean. The ribs and all that. Yeah, the, those need work. Well, you know, here's the thing, John. When, when the Commonwealth start, stopped uh, financing it, and, and, I, and, I'm, and I, I, would, I would say this to the governor, it's not him alone, it was the previous governor also. Mm -hmm. When they cut out the historical sites, I mean, right now, people don't even, I mean, it's not a big deal, but you can't even go to Pit Hole and have that museum open on a part-time basis. Right. You, you got the Niagara, which is uh, hurting for funds. Right. Pennsylvania's a very historical state, and here we are, piddling around. You got the Olympia in Philadelphia. From what I understand, it's rotting. Yeah. It's rusting. You know, they may have to... Well, look, I pretty, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the governor was here. Over yeah, the he was, and so was our Congress. I, yeah. I saw a different federal congressman. Mm -hmm. The senator was here, I guess. Was Bob Casey here? No, Toomey, I think, was okay. here. I don't know about Bob Casey, but I heard Toomey was here. I met uh, uh, Representative Thompson. Mm -hmm. uh, the governor was here. It was all in. Now, these guys got to come across, and, you know, it's not a lot of money, but, hey, well, the governor's up for re-election this Would year. Would we allow the Liberty Bell to go down? Uh, the governor's up for re-election this year. So it doesn't surprise me that he comes in with a nice check for Roger Richards and that crew. Gets him on the news a little bit, makes him look like he's How about doing a check something. For the Niagara, though? Exactly. Where was the check for the Niagara? Which is basically what, you know, what the view of what Erie's history is. Would we allow independence, to, uh, you know, independence hall to go down? No. Would we allow the Liberty Bell to rust? No. No. Right? Actually, that was in disrepair, too, I think they had to. Yeah, they had, you know. Yeah. It's embarrassing that in this country, and not just, I'm not just picking up Pennsylvania, but some states do a good job with historical things. Here you got a, a boat that is living. Yeah. You know, whether you like it or not is, you know, it's there, and it'd be a waste of the money they put into it to let it rot again. Now for some of the, you know, the different wastes of money that we have on different things, you, I, I know we're in a tough time as far as taxes goes and, and everything like that, but there are certain projects and, sh and certain type of community pride things that need to be addressed. Hey, we got money to build new roads around uh, Beaver Stadium. We got money for Beaver Stadium. We got football rules, and I love football, but you know what? How about some money for other stuff? 
Right. You know, we... I mean, it's, people are just, I mean, the, the, the way that state government is set up, I mean, the, with the way they just they have to let the nonprofits just, just skate for free, it's, it's really costing, it's costing the state and it's costing the community. And the casinos, you know, the, you know, everybody's supposed to be getting tax rebates from the casinos. And all the casinos, I mean, on, you're not going to really see a, an economic, a negative economic impact from the money spent at casinos right now. Because what it is, it's the older people, if you go in there, it's usually the older people, the seniors, who are in there spending the money that they've made throughout their lifetime, which is money that they would normally leave for their son or daughter, or grandkids, and then those people would go out and purchase, you know, make a down payment on a house, buy a new vehicle, uh, send their kids to private school, different things that money, you know, major amounts of money could do for a family where you could buy these things. But now, with the casinos up there, all these people are taking their money and they're spending it at the casino instead of leaving it mm -hmm. to the next generation to fuel the economy. So it's only going to get worse. But now we're finding out that with all the casinos here, they're killing each other. And, you know, a lot, a lot of this goes on, you know, throughout my travels through Erie County. A lot of people don't hear about the suicide rate of Summit Township. What is going on up there you don't hear about in public? the amount of people that are committing suicide in the parking lot up there that you don't hear about because that's something that the state or the government don't want you to know about. But I've been told by pretty prominent officials that the rate is climbing because of what's going on up there. And you know, if you're able to go up there, take the family up there, spend a little money, have a good time, that's okay, that's fine. But there are people that are going up there that get addicted to that, and they're spending their life savings up there, and it's going to have a trickle-down, negative trickle-down effect on the economies of all these states that are legalizing. Do you know that in, we were in Maryland, they allowed a casino on one of their state parks in Maryland. Normally, I mean, we don't even do that in Pennsylvania, but Maryland is starting to allow casinos on their state parks now. Jeez. So that would be like us, similar to us, putting a casino on Presque Isle. Would the, I mean, would it benefit? Would that be a great place to have a casino? Absolutely. Absolutely. Would that increase the tourism? Would that increase the traffic? Absolutely. But eventually, everybody's going to have a casino. I mean, they're going to be like a McDonald's. I mean, everybody's going to have one. So people aren't going to travel. So it's just going to suck the money out of our local economy. And we're all, it's not this generation that's going to that's gonna suffer. It's the next generation who would have received the money from grandma, grandpa, look at parents. The, look at the tolls now. Cleveland Casino is hurting them all different ways. Now, we may make more off the slots than Cleveland does, but then they make more off the table games. But overall, they've robbed us, okay? Pittsburgh, okay, you got a market down there, so... It's really starting to scrimp Erie's casino. Now you got the, the Indians, the Seneca Indians to the east. Right. They're doing rather well, building another addition to their hotel. Right. You got gambling to the north in Niagara Falls. Mm -hmm. There's only so much bucks out there. There's only so much money you can bleed out of a community. That's in what's it hurting, John? I'll tell you, I, I watch it. It's hurting the other things that where people used to go to movies or they went to the. Uh, the sporting events or they went to the restaurants. Mm -hmm. So when you go to a casino, and I noticed this, I was up in Minnesota and they had a horse track. There's no reason for you to leave right. the casino or the horse track because you got everything there you want. You can eat, sleep, drink, and gamble. And you got all the sports on television. Yeah, why would you leave? Why leave? So, I mean, what benefit is that to the... They'll suck all your money out at, 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 at an excessive rate. They used to get mad at Walmart. They said Walmart would suck the... You know, they would take all the business away the small from small-town America. Yeah. But a casino does that, too, in a way. Right. Have you ever seen any of those people really leave the parking lot? Nope. And it's just sad that uh, all these communities are coming. And, and if you see, the revenue's dropping every year. Yeah. And it's just going to be a matter of time. So it's, a, it's the initial money grab. I mean, I was for it at first. I wanted to see it at the Hammer yeah. Mill site. And, I, you know, there was clearly benefits to having it in the city because now we get nothing out of that whole scenario up there, we get zilch. I mean, I just got back from the one in Bethlehem. 
Yeah. Big big name entertainment, big right. big restaurants. So and then even have a mall attached to it. Really. Plus a hotel and a convention center. So you're getting more than just a gambling out of that site. It's the right. old steel mill site. You're getting oh the old okay. Bethlehem yeah, Steel. You're getting shopping. You're getting <laughs> yeah. You're getting everything. So your retail gambling. No, we went there. We didn't gamble, but you know what? We went to the outlet stores. So I'm saying, you know, in that way, it's okay. But you're right. You know, you what you watch around here. Every month it's going down. Mm -hmm. So then they they alter their payout rate, mm -hmm. which means they're cutting their bottom line. Right. So the bottom line is cut. That means less money going to the Commonwealth, less money going to the local government. Right. So it's it's like all you're doing is like prolonging the agony. When I mean, know. how much actual tax relief does somebody get? You don't you, you have to be a senior citizen, correct, to get the tax relief? Or is I think it in theory they said that you have to be a senior citizen to get tax relief from the casino profits. Well, you need that after you lose the money. Then. And I think you have to jump through all kinds of hoops or something along that line too, don't you, to get the tax relief? And look what they're doing with the money that they're getting there. I think, you know, you, I, I guess you can disagree with how they did it, but all the money that goes to the county, right? I'm not disparaging where it goes, but there's a lot of things that should be considered. There again, you, you know, the Niagara, some community stuff that needs help, you know. Mm-hmm. So there's some good organizations out there that need help. Right. Well, I know they do. And I think Mill Creek gets a cut. Summit gets a cut. Um, any any of the outlying townships that we get, we get zilch. We get zero, and it's it's kind of a shame that we lost out on that on one hand. But on the other hand, who lo who knows how much longer that'll be there? So it's just like any other money well. It's eventually going to dry up. Well, they're opening up another one in Philadelphia. I was reading their Philly paper. Uh huh. And they already got the, I think they call it the Sugar Land or whatever it is down there. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're opening up another one, a standalone facility. Mm -hmm. Like Bethlehem doesn't have a horse track either. Right. They're just standalones. Right. Uh, it'll be interesting. And I think there's another one going in between Erie and Pittsburgh. Oh, that's just great. So, I mean, when you start adding them up there, that's. Between Erie and, because they already have the rivers and we have ours. I think there was one going in the north suburb somewhere. If that happens, you'll watch the cut go down even more. Wow. Go ahead, caller. Yeah, hey, Kaz, I want to tell you that uh, that catch base on 36th and uh, Holland. Yeah, I went by there, and it was uh, it was filled with debris. Oh, they, what they did is they tore it out, and they put a brand new one in. They did? Yeah. That's thanks to you, and we made that call right here on the air, and I think... They cleaned all the catch bases, so they did a good job. I, well, I'm going to have to thank them then, because, you know, your persistence... Yeah, right. Hey, yeah. I got another question here. I got my new uh, school taxes. Yeah, don't, okay. <laughs> Pay them by September the 30th. Right. Get a 3% rebate instead of a February where you get a 2%. But last year when I paid them, it was the old assessment for the school taxes. So, but then they raised the, uh, they ra raised the assessment in the uh, first of the year, 213. Mm -hmm. So they raised it 15 thousand dollars so uh, actually it paid uh, less than last year because it was the old set assessment because you paid it in September you understand what I mean yeah so um, my new school taxes with the new assessment they went up 120 bucks hmm. as they reassess at the first of the year yeah they're, they're gonna I, I gotta profess I don't understand that one yet enough well, actually, if you paid your school taxes last year, you saved 116 bucks. Yep. See what I mean? I'm going to have to. I, I I'm going to try hard to get either our treasurer or somebody on here that's willing to come on and talk about it. It gets me now. If you pay them in September 30th, so uh, they're due February 28th of 2014. Mm-hmm. Pay them the 30th of September, which is five months. You save eight bucks. Doesn't seem like a lot. That's only one percent. <laughs> about a buck uh, sixty a month. So the, the people uh, when they get their new uh, school taxes are getting them now. Right. Going to see that it's going to be uh, reassessed and they're going to pay higher school taxes. Yeah, I kind of expected that. I think. Check, check your school. Did you get your school taxes yet? I probably did. I'm behind in my mail a little bit, but. <laughs> Well, take a look at it. You're going to pay the new assessment on September because last year, if you paid September, you saved 
uh, hundred and some dollars. I know they're working hard to get that uh, they realigned with, uh, you know, having taxes due in the middle of the year now. So right, they're gonna. So then he'd be paying it uh, 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 more often. Catch up with uh, the other uh, the other years. All right. But uh, I'm glad you. I'm glad they cleaned those basins finally, though. Fine. It, uh, they did a good job. Yeah, I went down before I went on vacation. I took a look, and they were still filled with a lot of debris. So they must have hit it not too long ago, right? Yeah, they hit it the last week or so. But check your school taxes on your new. Uh, I will. I'll give you a report on them when I get open mine up. Okay, I'll talk to you later, bud. Okay, I'm glad they. I got now. I got to call them. And thank you. Go ahead, caller. Hello. How are we doing today? I think we're doing okay. How about you? So far, so good. How you doing? A long time no talk to me. How you been? Uh, pretty good. good. Yeah, I was wondering how come the city's got so much money it can blow away on that study. That $25,000 study. That was a grant. A grant. Yeah, and grants are restricted usually, meaning that uh, I think in this case it was Brenda Sandberg that, am I right on that? It, it, the one you're thinking of is Brenda Sandberg applied for a grant and got it. And so, you know, you have to use it for what it's intended. Right. Well, it's like everything else in the city. You get a grant, what they, what they specify, just like those bump outs, that was just for the bump outs. Yep. I, right. There's grants out there, and a lot of people don't understand that you can't do what you want with the money once you get it. it you know, if you put in for one, you, you have to do what you wanted, what you intended to do with it. Yeah, just like you guys, they just, uh, just last year they had a bond issue. For doing the streets last year for eight million dollars. Mm, that was a couple years ago, but yes, you're right. And and I talked to the idiot on on the morning, Jim Lekorchek, and I got hold of the mayor. I asked the mayor, and Jim got on. And he just said, "Hey, you talk about the streets all the time." I said, "Wait, the streets ain't being done." He doesn't like to hear that, though. Who? Uh, Jimmy. Jimmy don't want to listen to nothing. He, he the guy doesn't know where he's at at half the time, you know. I, you know, and this guy just really teased me off, and he hung up on me. I'm talking to Mary, and he hangs up on me. And I, that, that, that's, that's uncalled for. But anyway, I told him Perry Square, you know, they got the prime thing. You had bike week two years. Last year, and before last year, they got the money, the $8 million, And they got $8 million, you know, and they didn't do any street. And this year, he just appeased a few people. Just on State Street to, what, 4th Street, where the concert was. Right. Uh, until the end of the uh, uh, square. Now, wait, what's going on with this money? These streets are really bad. Well, there's, I think there's a, there's a reluctance to raise taxes. And what, they, what are they doing with the $8 million? Well, they use it every year. But they, they, uh, they have a list, and they go through. The $8 million doesn't take long in this city. And... Uh, they get that money, a lot of it comes from the Water Reserve Fund. Uh, we take a percentage out of there every year. And that's helped the mayor uh, be able to do some projects. Like I said, the streets are just being torn up and everything else. There's a lot of work to be done, and in, in, in fairness to everybody, it was put off a long time ago, and we're playing catch-up now. And uh, I agree with you, there's a lot of streets, I think, that, that need to be re-looked at, even mine, is, even though it's in probably pretty good shape, uh, you know, it, it, it could use a touch-up in a couple of years. I think eventually within the next year or two, you're going to see a tax increase in the city. You have to. I mean, it, uh, I hate to say that, but you know what? There comes a time when infrastructure has to take precedence, you know, that. And there comes a time between election frames also. <laughs> Let's be realistic. You know, I... Uh, Who's your partner there? That's John Steiner. I remember I used to get in trouble when I was on the school board, and I raised taxes a couple of years. I had to. And I felt bad about it, and I made a promise I wouldn't. But sometimes when you sit there and you find out that, like this gentleman says, here, what are you going to do? You know, you can't worry about your political career sometimes. You have to just say, you know, the streets are falling apart or your, your sewers are going bad, you know. Right. And, and all towns go through that. Mill Creek will go through that in the future, you know. I mean, living in Erie, Pennsylvania, the weather that we get, the snow, the cold, the hot, the, the cold, the weather. I mean, it's rough on the roads. That just tears them roads up. And then we use salt on them, which is not good. Right, but. right. Like I said, $8 million last year, 
and they just went eight straight and they screwed that up with something. Well, new. I tell you, eight million dollars is not a lot of. When you look at the, that, doesn't go. That doesn't buy very much uh, I'm paving not joking material. With you. When I look at when I look at the, uh, you know, the bids on the projects, you know, and they they do get competitive bidding. We're we're getting good bids, but eight million does not go very far in anymore who, who, today. Here's a question for you. McCormick's Ch and Shivers. Who I mean, who were the people that bid on those? Uh, there's McCormick. There's Russell Standards. Russell Standards, right? And oh, I'm missing a good one. I don't know why. Why I said Shivers? I don't know. I, I'm having a mental block. There's there's, there's th so there's three outfits three that four, usually three or four that bid on the projects. Right. And they're very competitive. I mean, are they? Yeah, it's it's not like you know, I, I sit there at the bid process and you know it's very uh, very tight. I mean, right. Some of them are like razor thin the margins and some. If they need to work, sometimes, you know, they need to work for their men, so they'll really lower it. Right. I always bring up Erie to Distraught City, and they laugh about it. Erie's a what? A distraught City. It is. I'm distraught. Well, we're in trouble. We're, we're... The inner city is so bad, and you we're... have... How many families, foreigners, have, uh, United, uh, came into the United States just this year alone? I have no idea. Some went through a figure of five or eight hundred families. In Erie, you mean? Yes. That was a number thrown around. We can get that from the uh, county, uh, you know. The Census Bureau is the one that does it. That's how, they, that's how they come up with what they think the population of Erie will be. I think they're wrong. I think there's a lot of uncounted people. But, you know, there's no doubt that the city has declined. And, and although we're, we're, you know, we have our issues, we're still not as bad as a lot of cities out there. Well, well, they said that they came back to eight million. Well, like the fire department. Mm -hmm. Fire department got a new engine. That was that was uh, funded by the hospitals, wasn't it? And they put towards it the new fire fire engine. That's why I was told from. What do you say? Fire up. It's hard to hear. I couldn't hear you there, so you broke up. The new the new fire truck that they have. Right. That thing come out to the eight million. That came out from different people uh, donating, like the, um, the colleges and yeah, hospitals and stuff. Some of it did, but I I have to check where the exact money came out of. Right, that's easy to check out. But yeah, some of it did come from donations. But you know, we that's we know that fire trucks only going to last so many years, and that that's you know that's definitely a problem. No one's going to take the city of Erie and the county down. There's the pensions. How much do we put out in pensions a year? Well, it cost the mayor. This is it. Uh, our last year, the city's contribution was about ten million. Ten million, right? Yeah. That's a lot of money. Ten million. Yes, it is. But I want to say some that the pension, even though you know municipal pensions are coming under fire, ours is one of the better ones in the country. Believe it or not. I mean, people don't want to believe that, but our plan is funded to a much higher level. Our unfunded liability uh, is is a is better shape than a lot of communities. Like I said, I, 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 my feeling we're going to end up in trouble with that that debt of that. Well, we we're doing our best on the pension. The pension at one time was so underfunded. Uh, I don't want to go into the reasons why, but in the last 20 years, it has made such progress that we're now one of the better funded and given time and you know and we you know the boards being as uh, aggressive as they are we will have that fund up a little bit higher mm, like i said uh, yeah like in industry okay let's say when clinton, uh, clinton was in there mm. okay we had the prosperity i worked in industry everybody had their medical pay they had their pensions paid now it's a whole different ball game. Yes, it is, and I think you're starting to see the results of uh, the middle class. That's oh, kinda, the middle class is getting screwed, and what, shafted really what, bad. But when you don't have a middle class, it's deteriorating. It, you don't have like John and I were talking about. You don't see people at the ball game. You don't see them at the movies. You don't see them shopping. You know, they're they're watching their money guardedly. You know, it came up. How did we lose? Someone come up to me and ask me, how did we lose Palmer Downs out of the city of Erie? And I said, well, it's tough to find out. How did we lose it in the city? How did we lose what, the power? 
Commodore Downs? Oh, Commodore. Oh, Commodore Downs. That was in Fairview. Why did he go out there and say where they wanted to put it? Oh, you're talking about why it didn't come to Hammer Mill? Right. Oh, okay, yeah. We talked about that. Yeah, I mean, that, uh, that was... We could do a whole... Yeah, that'd be a two whole show. shows on that. <laughs> We're out of time almost. So. Just, just give me a just tip over real quick. I, I would say the biggest cause was uh, the inability of elected officials and the developers and uh, all those involved to get together. And that was, you know, there was a lot of mistakes made, and I think in the end it cost this city a chance to get that casino. There was a big thing about a $5 million give back to MTR for the yeah. rights to be located there. Then we had a, um, a drama between uh, the mayor was got, a, I don't know, he charged with something at the time for, they yeah. were buying property over there, which he was eventually found innocent of. And it was just one big fiasco and we kind of dropped the ball on it. Yeah, there you have it. The casino <laughs> basically, yeah, the developers wanted a little money back yeah. for a few years. Right. To make necessary improvements, right? Because the site wasn't their number one site. So you want we want they wanted us to spend a little money to make a lot of money. We didn't want to spend a little money because egos got in the way and people made decisions uh, that I didn't agree with at the time. But uh, therefore, we don't have it and we get nothing and it's up there. But who knows how long it's going to last? In a nutshell, period. I mean, every every month you're seeing it going down and down and yeah, down. Yeah, I mean, I think that while they're finding out that. You just can't have slot machines there. It's a, it's competition, and right. you got Cleveland to the west, you got Pittsburgh to the south, you got Niagara Falls, Buffalo to the north, right. and you got Salamanca, which puts a pretty good product out to the east. Right. Oh yeah, at least you know up there, like here you got those penny machines. You got to spend three dollars to make fifty cents, you know, maximum bid. How can you do that? You got know, quarter machines. These people are making some money, you know what I mean? But these penny machines and these dollar machines. That's a rich man's game. Right. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for calling. I thought they were going to kick us off the air here any second. Oh, you guys have a nice day. Thanks for talking. Okay. Listen, before we go, I want to thank some people. I had a, an opportunity to have breakfast with uh, Reverend Griswold, uh, Clark Griswold, who was, hold, tell him to hold on a second. Can you hold on one second, sir? You'll be the last caller then? He, he was a descendant of Daniel Dobbins. Uh, oh, we really? had, yeah, they came into town, we honored them. Uh, they were able to come in and be honored as far as, they had no idea they were even related to Daniel Dobbins, but they were elated. We took them down to the site where the new monument's going to be down on Dobbins Landing. They love Erie, they can't wait to be back. They have some historical artifacts that uh, Erie would just love to, to see and to love to have. But I don't know if we're going to get them. But uh, they, they're talking about building a relationship with Erie. And uh, I just want to thank them for coming if they ever get a chance to watch the show on YouTube. Uh, we want to welcome them and thank them for coming. Go ahead, caller. Uh, yeah, it's an uh, important meeting tonight. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry I called you, sir. I'm sorry. And, uh, our watch meeting is tonight, 7 o'clock. I'll be there, the Lamb of God. Uh, we're supposed to have city council there and the mayor. So we're going to see who's going to show. Well, I'll be there, so... That's uh, regarding uh, college rental units, tenant behavior, parking issues. It's been quiet, hasn't it, or not? Pardon? Has it been quiet this week? Uh, in some places, yes, and uh, some, no. Oh, okay, because I'm getting mixed reports a little bit. Yeah, well, we're going we're gonna to see tonight what's going to be going uh, on. Let's hope our, our new chief, uh, we're, I'd like to bring him on board. We'll see who's going to show. Okay, I'll be there and see you at night, 7 o'clock. o'clock. Thanks. And the fight continues. Yes, it does. Hey, where, where are they from, the Griswold? Uh, they were from Philadelphia. He was, he's a, he was a, a retired pastor. Ah. Um, him and his wife, they are great people. I'd like to get some artifacts here. Yeah. Go ahead, caller. Uh, yes, Cass. Yes. You talked about couches and stuff on East 38th Street up by Mercer and stuff. On yeah. your way home tonight, take a ride up French Street. From 26th to 35th to see how many couches and stuff you see out in the lawns. On Old French Road? No, French Street. French Street, 26th to 35th? Yep, take a ride up and take your notebook with you. Okay. Thank you, bye. And with that, I think we're... I think he gave us the one-minute sign, so I want to... That was, what, three minutes ago? Yeah, at three, at, once it gets past 3 o'clock, yeah. uh, the replays, were off the air. As soon as 3 o'clock well, hits... At least they can talk on the live, so... Yeah, that, that's what counts, Tom, I guess, too. as always... Kaz, hey, you know, we've been gone a week. I missed you. I'm like, I miss Kaz. So I'm glad that we're, we're back together. Hopefully, uh, 
we'll have some good things to talk about next week if we're both still available. God willing, right? Yep. <laughs> well, hope your mother, you know. Yeah, she's okay. she's it's a struggle, but day to day, and uh, but I'm hanging out with her, and we you know we watched a little bit of football game last night. So, which one? Dallas and Giants. She's a Bills fan, so. Oh, she's. Yeah, they blew it. Browns, what? Bills, Browns, and Steel. I know you didn't even you weren't even talking about your mug today. Oh, no, my Bills are my second team. I had to go through two turmoils. Yeah, and the Steelers fans, they were all upset. I see. I'm a Titans fan personally, so I yeah. loved every second of it. But uh, hey, don't put your mother that stress with. The <laughs> yeah, I just, at least be the Browns. I mean, lose Steve the whole J. way Mango through. had a good game. I heard. They, yeah. Their young guys are looking good. So thanks for having me. Hey, tell your mother to get better, I and will. what we'll do, we'll take her up to Buffalo. There you go. We'll shuffle off to Buffalo. There you go. She'll love it. Thanks for having me. Cue the music. <laughs> what did he say? There it is. Yeah, Ladies and gentlemen, you have been watching the Taxpayers Hotline Show on Erie's own Government Access, Channel 9. This, oh, this is.